Hi, my name is Mary Wong and I'm a registered traditional Chinese medicine practitioner and acupuncturist in downtown Toronto. Today I have the honor of having my a special guest. Her name is Maria Velve. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Mary. And um, the topic of discussion is about not non-toxic um, cosmetic ingredients. And so really I want to discuss about um, the five top um, well, the top five ones that you would want to avoid. But before I do so, um, I just want to let you know Maria is a professional makeup artist. How long have you been doing this? Oh my goodness, 17 years. Okay, so she's been a makeup <laughs> artist for quite some time. She's also a professor. And right now, she's currently doing some great research with regards to looking for the best, healthiest, toxic-free skin care and makeup and uh, right now she's doing it locally around Canada so nationally in Canada but perhaps maybe you'll also check out internationally yes, yeah, definitely <laughs> there's a lot there okay so let's move on and um, be concise so what are some of these cos uh, cosmetic ingredients that we should avoid okay. so I'm gonna start off by uh, mentioning parabens and I think that's some um, one uh, preservative that people are aware about. So uh, they come in um, you know, a few different uh, um, types of wording, you know, so you can have like a methyl paraben, but pretty much the, the word paraben will be at the end of the word. So those would be the ones to watch for. Um, and uh, pretty much anything that contains water has to have some kind of preservative. So whether it's a paraben or a different type of preservative, um, you know, it has to have something uh, to keep it on the shelf. So that's um, number one. The second one is actually, again, a preservative. So as I mentioned, I mean, just because it doesn't have paraben, it can have something else to preserve it. So uh, BHT and um, BHA, they're very hard scientific words. So I don't know if I'm gonna try and pronounce it, but these are preservatives that can be found in lotions and lipsticks. Um, and uh, they are known to interfere with hormone function. Which and will impact? fertility That's and right. um, per pregnancy, but also, you know, it just any uh, man and woman in general, because That's we all right. have hormones and we don't want it to cause other uh, dysregulation in the body and it can be uh, carcinogenic as That's well right. as um, uh, it can even um, impact organ function. So we don't want that to happen. Yeah, exactly. Like for the par parabens can actually um, affect uh, male reproductive function. Yes, so it's not absolutely. just for us females, right? So um, men are using, um, you know, products on their skin as well. The third one is a, is a big one and it's fragrance. And that can be found um, in a lot of the different things that we use. Um, it can be even be found in a face powder or a face cream. Um, things can be scented and actually um, products can also be scented not to smell, and I know that sounds kind of strange, but um, they can actually have something that, um, a, fra a fragrance in there that makes you detect no fragrance, because now we're starting to look for fragrance. Oh, yes. So, so that's also uh, kind of interesting. I also recently found out uh, it makes the product seem odorless, but it does actually contain odors from the other ingredients that it has. So those would be more like masking. Uh, okay, right? so, mac so masking smells to make yeah. it seem like it's natural. That's right, that it's Ooh, that's odorless, um, but it's actually not. <laughs> oh, thank so. you for that. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, All right, so so yeah, so those synthetic masks are actually hormone disruptors. So that's the and carcinogens. Okay, um, the fourth one are phthalates, and phthalates are plasticizers, but they're also the, uh, the they're also the ingredient that makes scent linger. So if you have a face cream, um, or even you know they sell uh, body powders, uh, face powders that actually have a scent. If that scent lingers, it's a very good chance that they will have phthalates um, in them. So fragrance would have phthalates. Right. Because that uh, that's what keeps that kind of that scent. Um, and I'm not talking about, you know, just wearing perfume. I'm talking about a scented product. It could be a lipstick that has a certain uh, scent or it could be a face powder. It could be a face cream, something like that, a toning mist. Oh, for sure. I remember uh, going by in, in um, New Jersey or something. There's there's huge manufacturers for fragrance. Yes. Right? And yeah. not just perfumes. Like, yeah. it's just smells. 
for yeah, smells, it, right? it smells nice. And, and, and a lot of times I think two fragrances are added in different products. Like you would think, why does a powder need to smell, right? It's, it's kind of interesting. But um, one thing can be, you know, like, yes, we, we are maybe, um, you know, the, the type of culture that likes fragrances. But at, at the same time, again, I talked about masking. So if there's something else in that powder or in that face cream that they don't want you to smell, they're going to add something to scent it into a more pleasing um a more pleasing scent, I guess. But now, uh, Maria, we might have to distinguish this from the natural sense of, let's say, like essential oils. That's that are right. Just, those are natural scents. That's so right. There's nothing wrong with that. Exactly, no. So exactly. I don't want the public to feel that, oh, gee, anytime you s smell any smell, mm -hmm. that it's all bad. So there are yeah. things that are... It depends where, yeah, it depends where it comes the from. The source, yeah, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. Good. And then the, the last one is triclosan, and, um, and that can be found in a lot of um, antibacterial, um, you know, products. So that could be actually a face wash you know I know people that use uh, you know uh, clean and clear or even um, Cetaphil um, my little guy has yes, really Cetaphil, sensitive yes, skin okay. and I was thinking hmm, maybe that's something I should get but um, any of those types of cleansers um, can actually contain triclosan um, and that is also um, an endocrine disruptor okay great triclosan, yeah so then Oftentimes, we really don't know what's in our products, right? You just go buy it, you see it on TV or That's what right. have you, or in ads, and everybody else is, or there this famous person, the celebrity is using it, That's I'm going right. to use it. But really, then how do you safeguard people, and what advice will you give in terms of buying your products? I think... Um I believe with um, with you know with makeup and um, and skincare, there is a big trend on everything green. And actually, I shouldn't say a, tre a trend; it's a movement. It's not going away. This is that's a, this is where we are right now. People are looking for healthier products, um, and I think that um, most of the the bigger industries that are into um, you know the, the cosmetics field, they, they want to jump on that bandwagon. They want to create something that they think that the the, the public would also really like. So I think. Um, yeah, I mean, checking ingredients, of course, that's one thing. And also, uh, don't fall for marketing schemes. You know, if, if it has little flowers or the packaging is green, um, it doesn't make it natural. So uh, the terminology natural can actually, um, you know, be used by anybody. I could create a skincare line tomorrow and call it Maria Natural, you know. Right. Um, it's just a word. It doesn't yeah, mean anything, Exactly. Right? Yeah. So just kind of be a little bit more aware of, um, you know, the, the packaging because it's, it's just marketing. Or the yeah exactly as you mentioned Mary the celebrity that actually um, you know um, you know I'm thinking Jennifer product. Aniston right now um, okay. for Avino for example okay. right so um, Jennifer Aniston yeah gets paid the big bucks to uh, market that product to us and for us to to buy it because we believe that Jennifer Aniston is wearing it um, right so you're paying whatever you're paying for that product but um, the biggest chunk of where that money goes is marketing and um, and then they try to save on the ingredients right so give me a, a little dollar value I, yeah I, exactly you that and I, I, I love mentioned, that so just yes. in my research I came through just some some statistics that you know if you're if you're going out there and buying um, you know the, the beautiful skin care cream that uh, you know might cost hundred and twenty dollars how much of that is actually going into the ingredients it was something scary like six or seven dollars and how much is that pot of cream 120 120 yeah, yeah. so there you go right <laughs> don't fall for marketing yeah. because just because it's more expensive does not mean that it's a better product That's right it's a brand so we hear oh Chanel and maybe we're blinded or Yves Saint Laurent mm. and uh, um, you know uh, someone really famous is um, you know advertising it but that famous person is not wearing that cream, guaranteed. Ah, <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, just by the way, I had a sip of this, and I don't want you all to think that I'm having this giant <laughs> coffee that is toxic. I'm actually drinking hot water. <laughs> I love FYI. it. I love it. Cheers. <laughs> okay, so now one last question yeah. I want to ask. Um, you told me about two apps that yes. you can get. I would love for you to share this with everyone because you don't have to get, get a PhD. You, you don't need to do any kind of reading. You That's just right. get these apps. Yeah. Right? These apps are fantastic. So um, I'm not sure if you have heard of the environmental working group. So they have um, a website that you can actually go on and you can type in the name of the product or the name of the ingredient. So that can be at home, um, you know, on your computer or your phone. But they have an app now. So the environmental working group, I'm going to come a little bit closer. So you can maybe find it, um, you know, find the app um, for the environmental uh, working group. And it's called Skin Deep.
Um, so that's one. And Can you it's, click on it? Yeah, of course. It's quite a, a large database. And Oops, I don't know if there's a, oh, that's you know okay. what? It's, it's, I think it's backwards. Oh, on, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's okay. All yeah, right, fine. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So th it's called Skin Deep. So that's one, that's something that you can search through your Play Store or, um, I mean, I don't use an iPhone, but you know, with iPhone. The second one that actually just recently came out, and this one is Canadian, is called Think Dirty. And I love the name for that. I think it's, it's so cute. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, it is backwards, but you can see here how it says scan your product. So I've been recently scanning my entire household. Um, so right. you would just tap on that. And then all you need, you see the little, oops, excuse me, the little red bar. You just need the barcode or the little skew of your product. You scan it and it will search the entire database to find the product. If the product has not been added recently, because there's, I mean, thousands and thousands of product, they give you a chance to take a photo of the bottle and submit it into them. So currently they're at almost 500,000 products. Um, and what's great about that is that mm -hmm. it actually shows the uh, the products uh, ingredients, and then there's a rating as to right. how uh, what um, how toxic it really That's is. That's right. right. So out of ten, so ten would be uh, really really toxic. So for example, this shower gel here that I had at home um, gets a rating of four. It actually shows you where that rate I mean that rating goes. So they have uh, carcinogenity, they have allergies, they have developmental and reproductive toxicity as well. So you can actually see how it rates with yeah. that. Um, it gives you a breakdown of all the ingredients. So the ones in the green are great, good to go. They're clean. Um, and as it gets darker, like the darker kind of here, uh, I guess more yellowish green, and then it will go to red if the uh, ingredient is really it's toxic. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the other lovely thing about it, so this was a shower gel here that I was just showing you. It has our picks. It will give you a huge list of cleaner products. This is all rating of zero. I really hope that's true. <laughs> like, you never know. Okay. But it will give you a clean rating and then something else that it, it recommends a cleaner product for you in case you want to switch it up. Now, I'm just going to add in here, mm -hmm. though. So for me, myself, I, I don't, I'm not like a total loyal person to a specific product. Mm -hmm. But for the last couple of years, I myself have just been using... Uh, uh, Argan oil, which is actually very expensive. Yeah. I didn't use any kind of carrier oil. That's I just right. did it straight, and then I just need like literally a couple bit. of dabs. Yeah, and that's all I use. So it's literally yeah. one ingredient, right? Now you yeah. mentioned a, a product out of Victoria. No, yeah, uh, out of Squamish, out of Squamish, Squamish BC, British so. Columbia, in Canada. Yeah, and uh, the brand is called Helena Lane. So L A N E. Um, and um, this is just just one example. I, I I know there's a lot of lovely lovely products, but um, one example of a of a skincare line that has chosen to do things really really simply. So all of her products contain four to five ingredients. That's it. So when you read the list, you can actually understand what's in there. You're reading it and you're oh jojoba oil. Okay, I know what that is, yeah. which makes it really great because for a lot of other products, we read the label and we don't know what those things are. So keeping it um, at a low ingredient list, like Mary you mentioned one ingredient argan oil fantastic we all know what that is mm -hmm. um the minute you start getting long ingredient lists that's where there's more confusion and we don't, we don't actually know mm -hmm. what those things are so, so anyway keep it simple you don't have to break the bank mm -hmm. and uh don't fall for um mass marketing that's so right that, that's really the final that's right that's right just think of julia roberts or the other famous yeah. you know gorgeous celebrity <laughs> that's who's getting your money <laughs> all right so i think we've uh yeah, I think this is good. Yeah, thank exactly. Thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you so much, and, uh, Maybe thank we'll you. talk about other things, maybe about nails next time, okay? So uh, please stay tuned next Wednesday where I will be speaking to Zainab Yuraz, and she. Uh, we're going to talk about the Canadian Infertility Awareness Week. So stay tuned for that next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, do check out my previous post. In fact, last post was about... Um, using natural deodorant and so check yes. them all out check out my book pathways to pregnancy and i look forward to seeing you next time take care yeah. thank you